that's it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I am going to open up the PDF that I made for this. So let's go and find that. I believe it is called Example Fantasy Grounds Module Conversion. There it is. So here's the PDF. I'm going to go open Fantasy Grounds uh, program itself. And the whole idea of this is to um, show you, and yeah, you guys probably, it's a good idea if you guys can see what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So uh, the whole idea is to show uh, how you make a module literally from the first step to the last step. So this PDF has the instructions in it and has examples of everything that you would make in Fantasy Grounds. And it's not that long. And I'm hoping that we can get through this in two hours. I, I, I estimate 90 minutes to two hours, but we'll just do it and see what happens. So uh, I'm just going to start reading it as, as it is. Uh, an example, Fantasy Grounds Conversion. Uh, this is an example document. It will be used to show how Fantasy Grounds module is converted from a PDF. This PDF will be converted into a module so that the user can follow what was done here and the .mod file that is open in Fantasy Grounds Library. An accompanying video will also be on YouTube. So here we go. Uh, tools that you will need. You'll need Fantasy Grounds, obviously. An image extractor. Now, I use Adobe Acrobat. That is a paid service. Uh, there are many, many, many uh, uh, things that you can use on the internet to extract images from PDFs. I just happen to use Adobe Acrobat. Uh, Token Maker, I use uh, Roll Advantage. Uh, dot com slash token stamp, which we will see here. Uh, this is the best one, and it is free that I have found. Uh, but again, there are many options for people if, if they don't want to use that one. So we'll get back to that. A text editor. Uh, now, what I use for text editing is I use Notepad++. This, again, is free. Let me just uh, clear these out here. Uh, Notepad++ is a free thing that you can download on the Internet. I found it to be the best one for what my purposes are. But again, you can use any text editor that, that you feel comfortable with. Uh, optional NPC maker. Now, we're only going to make one NPC for the purposes of this video. But if you are making multiple NPCs, I highly recommend... Well, uh, that didn't work. Now, did it? I'm going to have to check that link. Here we go. Uh, www.mask.net. M-A-S-Q. And this is a Fantasy Grounds community member that has made the Engineer Suite. And he's got the NPC part of it and the spell part of it done. And then he's making a magic item part and a reference manual part and all this other stuff. So as of now, uh, again, this is free. He does accept donations. And I've donated to him because he's what he's doing is great. We will not be using this today, but I did want to mention it because if you're making many, many, many NPCs, you definitely want to check out the Engineer Suite. But since we're only making one today... Uh, we will not be using that. Uh, um, you need the optional extension CSV table importer and the optional extension table parser. This will help you to make tables easier and faster if you have a lot of tables in in the uh, PDF. Uh, and we just have one example of each. Here's a rollable table here uh, that I'm showing. And then we have a, a regular inline table down here. So we have one example of each, and then we'll we'll get to that, and you'll see how it works. So uh, let's get started here. First things first, create a new campaign in Fantasy Grounds. A best practice is to title the campaign with build-title. Now, again, that's just the thing that I, Rob Tui, do. You can do what you like, but as you, if you, if you look here in Fantasy Grounds and I go to campaigns, there's 9,000 of them in there, and so it's easier for me, just my eye, to pick out the build ones, and then... Whoops, uh-oh, yeah, I clicked on it. That was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> but you saw there was a there was other ones uh, titled Game and whatever. So I'm just going to back out of what I just did because I clicked on it, and I, apparently my mouse is very sensitive. Uh, in my mind, I clicked on it once, but in the machine's mind, it saw me click twice. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I'm going to wait. I'm just going to open another instance of Fantasy Grounds and close the other one when, when it finishes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a campaign. I'm going to choose the 5e rule set. Now, theoretically, what I'm showing you will work for any rule set, but I will be doing 5e rule set today. So uh, there may be, if you're doing something else, Savage Worlds or Cthulhu or you know Pathfinder, things may be different. Uh, but I'm going to title my campaign Build uh, Example Fantasy Grounds Module. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have a couple of extensions here that I want to use. So a lot of these will just skip. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we have... I'm going to turn on the 14 point uh, extension. You don't need that, but it, it, I'm old and it makes the print bigger for me. Uh, so we're going to do core RPG table import and CSV table parser. Uh, so th those are those are the, really the only ones that you absolutely have to use to do what I'm going to show you on how to do. So we're going to go ahead and start that campaign. And meanwhile, I'm going to close the other uh, thing that I opened. And we'll go back to the PDF. So we'll wait for the table to load. And... Um, there is an order of build. So again, if you're creating modules, there's many, many ways to do this, but there's a particular way that I do it, which is what I'm gonna teach here. So the order of build, uh, we'll just go over it and then I'll start doing it. So um, the steps in order are to extract the images from the PDF, make the tokens, build the pre-gen characters, build the rollable tables, build the NPCs, build the magic items, build the backgrounds, classes, feats, races, skills, and spells. And then create blank story entries that you uh, that you then title and number, and you'll see why you do it that way. And then enter the stories entries, uh, making sure to add encounter or parcel. Uh, and actually, I should have even quest uh, uh, quest there. I'll have to adjust that after the show. Uh, lock any story entries that you will not need to further pay attention to as you go through it. And then as you go through on your second pass, you create the encounters and the parcels and link them to the story entries, and then you lock those entries. Uh, on your third pass, you pin the appropriate story entry to the maps. On the fourth pass through, you place the encounters and the tokens on the maps, and then you uh, go through a fifth and final time just to double check, and then you export the module and you're done. So those are the steps. So we're going to, uh, let's see, let's close this. Uh, might have a little bit of delay on screen there because of the, Fantasy Grounds takes a second to, yeah, it's going to give me the blue circle, and then it's going to follow my instructions. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract all images and maps from the PDF and then resize them. So again, I use Adobe Acrobat, so I'm going to come right over here to a copy of this again, and I'm going to open it using Adobe Acrobat. Um, there we go. And when I have that open... I am just going to go to export images and JPEGs and I'm going to take all the images out and I'm going to export them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those images in the, the images folder of the campaign. So here's the campaigns, here's build example modules, and here's images. So there's already the images folder created and that's where I'm going to put them. So I'm going to say save. And then it's going to go through and pull out. There's probably only about six or so many images in there. Now, if I go to that file, let's just go there and see how many we got. Campaigns, build, images. Okay, so there was there was many, many images. Now, what it did is it, it, it stripped out all the formatting stuff. And so I really don't need uh, most of these images. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to highlight all this. And I'm going to unhighlight the ones I want to keep, uh, which is only going to be these few images. So I'm going to delete the rest. Okay. Now you can go through these images and resize them and uh, do that manually one at a time. Uh, you, you could just use, any, if you're using uh, Microsoft Windows, which is what this tutorial uses. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not to supporting Mac uh, on this this tutorial, but you would just go edit it with um, the Paint program and go up here to resize, and then make sure that all your images are no more than 700 tall or uh, 1,000 wide. That's the parameters for Fantasy Grounds that you want to use. And if you have a map, that can be as big as, so this one could be as big as 2048 by 2048. But what I do is I have written a macro, and again, this, this isn't part of what I'm teaching today, just to know that you can do it, but I also assume that most people won't be using Photoshop because it is a paid service. 
just like Adobe Acrobat is. So there's, there's, you can either do this manually, but since I have a, a macro that I wrote for um, Photoshop, we'll do it in one step, and that way it'll just be quicker for the purposes of this video. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what file you can open any file. This is just a blank file, but I'm going to come right down here to scripts and I'm going to go to image processor and here's a script I wrote that will look at all the images and it will make sure that the, the pictures are no more than 700 tall or no more than 1000 wide and then what I'll do is and, and it'll actually put them all into a different folder and then once that's done which I Think it should be right about now uh, we can go ahead and close Photoshop and we can go back to that folder and you'll see that all those images are here so I'm gonna copy every image except the map I'm gonna leave the map out because we can we can handle it if that one is bigger and I'm gonna copy them and go back here and repaste them so that they're the new size so every one of these pictures now meets the parameters and I can even delete this folder because we don't need it anymore uh, now, just just because there's only one of them, and I'm curious, let me see how big this one is. Uh, it's 2,000 by 2,000, so perfect. We don't have to change it. We can leave it as long as it's 2048 by 2048 or, or smaller, then we're perfectly fine. Now, the, we will name these appropriately as we go. So, let's go back to the next step. Uh, the next step is to make tokens. So, here we are at that previous website I mentioned, which is rolladvantage.com slash token stamp and I'm gonna uh, choose an image I'm gonna go to the campaign file there's only one monster in our example so I'm just gonna go find the picture of this monster which is this it's a it's the gum elemental <laughs> it's a piece of gum I'm gonna open this up uh, I'm gonna go ahead and choose this kind of a circle I'm gonna make it a red background or a red uh, thing make the background like this now I can kind of manipulate this so that it gets to where I like it in the token. Maybe I want the whole thing in there. So I'm going to make it a little smaller. Uh, maybe maybe that looks good for the token. So I'm going to download this token. And tokens, of course, have to be not in the images folder, but in the tokens folder. And I do not have a tokens folder, so let's make one. And if I make a... Whoops. No, I don't want a shortcut. I made a mistake. Let's try that again. If I make a tokens folder here, new folder, calling it tokens, all small letters, everybody. And then I'm going to drop this in here, and I'm going to call it uh, gum elemental, just to be proper, and save that token. And now if, you, if we go here to tokens and go to campaign, you'll see that that token is in there. So that's there. All right. Uh, so let's see. Build all pre-generated characters. Okay, so if you have pre-generated characters, let me go to library here and open all buttons here. If you have pre-generated characters, uh, you can make them as you normally would. You can just make a character, and then when you export the module, it'll be in there for people to use. So we're just going to leave everything blank. You know, we're just doing an example. So we'll make this character Rob, and I'll just leave it a blank character named Rob. And then, you know, we don't actually need to take the time to fill out the entire character because we're only doing an example. So that's there. So we're pretty much done with that step. So uh, next step is close iTunes because we don't need it anymore. Why is iTunes open still? Okay. Uh, we also don't need the counter. So let's see. Let's go to the next step, which is going to be build all oh see some <laughs> oh by the way the pdf reader that i'm using is called pdf exchange viewer that's a free thing on the internet uh it's not perfect but it is free and it does work the only problem i've ever seen is what just happened i clicked on it and uh it kind of took away a lot of the letters that i was looking at so i no problem i just go reopen it now that actually doesn't happen very often i'd say one in 50 times does that happen but of course, since I'm making an example video, it had to happen now. Uh, so step four, build all rollable tables. So now I'm going to go through the PDF, and there's only one rollable table, and here it is. So now that extension we installed allows us to build a rollable table 
by clicking on the table, clicking the blue arrow up. Now, you won't have this normally in Fantasy Grounds, but if you do have the extension in, you'll have uh, rollable tables here. And this saves you a lot of time. I mean, you're going to just see a quick example, but imagine if I was doing this for dozens and dozens and dozens of tables. All I'm going to do is come over here to the PDF. I like to get my things in order. Let me... This is just a best practice for me. I have the I have the PDF uh, as the third from the left, the Notepad++ as the second from the left, and Fantasy Grounds on the right, just down here like this. And so uh, it just helps you to go from... So I'm going to hold the Alt key, and I'm only going to... I'm only I'm only going to copy the right column. So you see how it's not copying the numbers? If you hold the Alt key and do this, you can do this in almost any document in PDF Reader. I'm just copying those, um, and they're all one line. There's no there's nothing longer than a, a line. Uh, and if it was, I would paste it in here first and clean up the lines. But you can see that the title is there and then the six lines. And the way I know is I have seven lines, so there's six lines plus the title. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to go right over here. And we're not, we're not teaching how to use this extension, but suffice to say that if, if each thing is on a line and the first line is the title, all you do is paste that in and click Import, and it builds the table. There's the 1D6. It's done. So there's the personality trait table, and I, I could I could actually come down here, put personality trait, and I, I kind of made a mistake. That that should actually be called adopted personality traits because this is the adopted background. So there we go. So I've built that table, and uh, I'm done. So that'll be an asset that I've already built. That'll be something we come back to later. So step five is build all magic items. Okay, so there's one magic item, and I'm just going to go here to items, and sometimes I like to split the screen so that I can see the PDF on the left and Fantasy Grounds on the right, and you can do that by just adjusting your screen. I'm going to open a new magic item, and the magic item is called Wond Wondrous Hat, and it's Wondurous Hat, not Wondrous Hat, because uh, Wondrous is spelled without an E, but the title is a Wondrous Hat. I just did that to be funny. And this is a wondrous item. Uh, this is where you would put the type. You would put armor, weapon, wondrous item, whatever it is. Item does have to be small letter there for wondrous item. Fantasy Grounds doesn't like it if you use a capital I, even though that's what I like. And you could then add, you know, a hat. That looks weird. Or whatever you might say. And then any notes if you wanted to put that. Subtype would be if you had a weapon and then it was a martial weapon or something like that. And the rarity is going to be common, requires attunement. Uh, we don't have a cost, but if it was there, if the cost or weight was there, you'd put that in. And then, again, since this is just a little example, we're just going to put the text in there. And then now I've built that item, so that magic item is done. And then there it is, so we're done. And then if you had, you know, 40 magic items, you would just build each one of them like that. Uh... Build the backgrounds. Okay, so again, let's just close this. Let's go to backgrounds, and we're going to build a new background. Now it starts to get a little complicated because there's two parts to the background. There's the description part and then the the order in the back. And, and the, the, the second tab, the order tab, is so that when you build a character, it knows to put these things on the character sheet. So uh, let's go down and find our background, which I believe is called – what is the background? Oh, it's the adopted so the title is adopted. Uh, now the description, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste that into the text editor. Now the reason I'm doing this is you want you have to clean up the text and take out double spaces and, and ligatures and different things like that. And depending on the PDF you're working from and, and you know where, where you got that, there may be many different things that are wrong with it. Now I've written a macro. And part of my video today is not teaching about the macros, but just to let you guys know, there is a it's one one key that I touch, and basically what it does is clean up the text and copy it into the clipboard, so that I can then come over here and, and paste it and have a clean copy of it. Now I have to actually go and, and format this, 
so I will do that now. And highlighting that, uh, Control B for Control B is uh, bolding, so languages. And I'm just matching the PDF here. Uh, so equipment and feature. Now the feature is interesting because the feature is actually a link that you put on the second page. So the feature reads, even though, oh, you know what? I might have, I might have actually made a mistake here. Did I make a mistake? Oh, oh, I know. Yeah, no, no, never mind, never mind. I didn't make a mistake. I just thought I did. Okay, so uh, I'm actually going to copy the feature out, and then I'm going to go over here and create the feature, which is founding. And then I'm going to put that text in there. And then when I go back over here, I'm going to link that. And you'll recall any any fifth edition background that you've looked at. That's basically what you get. You go down, you see the you see the things, and then you see the feature there. And if you click on it, open it up, you get this. Uh, so then, uh, suggested characteristics. That's just a couple lines, so I don't really need to put that in the text editor. Uh, control two is what makes your title like that. You adopt the customs of the people you found. Now, normally on any background, you would have four tables. You would have your flaws, your personality traits, and the other two, whatever they are. <laughs> but of course, we are only doing an example, so I just made the one. And the one I made was personality traits, which I already made. And so if I go to my tables, I've already made the table. I can dro drop it in right here, and I can add table. Make that look nice by formatting it in bold. So now we have our complete background uh, information there, and all we have to do is fill in the back page. So skills, let's go to skills, history, copy it, paste it in, languages, two of your choice, paste it in, tools, uh, and this one has no tools, and then equipment, put that in there, and that is literally the entire background complete. Adopted background is done, and so we can save that for later. All right, let's go back up to the next step. Um, classes, okay, same thing. We're gonna open a class. We're gonna start a new class. And if you get stuck or you don't know exactly what a class should look like, you can open the SRD or the player's handbook or something and just look at another class side by side uh, to, to match it up. But I, I know what this is gonna look like, so we're gonna copy all this. Um, uh, and usually you're not doing a, a class you're actually doing a subclass so as a matter of fact I will I will do that uh, it's just an easier thing this is a subclass of the fighter so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the SRD I'm gonna open up the SRD data which is in the everybody has that in your fantasy grounds library now I'm gonna go to classes and I'm gonna find the fighter and I'm gonna drag another copy into, so you see how there's fighter, SRD, and then fighter blank. So if you go to new, there's a copy of the fighter. And and uh, so I am going to use that and make the subclass. Now, I could copy this stuff over, but the easier thing to do is to go down to the subclass where you see champion, and we would just change champion to boxer. So you can make these from scratch, but your fighter is still going to have fighting style, second win, action surge, martial archetype, still going to have all that. And you can make a new class. from If there's a new class that's a plain out straight brand new class, you can do that. But that's a very, very rare situation. Usually it's not a new class. It's, a, it's an archetype of one of the main uh, 12. So we're going to actually close that. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna manipulate the champion and change everything that's champion to boxer. So here we go. Here's the five features of the champion that I'm gonna make the five features of the boxer here. And actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like he's got seven. 
So that I'm kind of glad because that'll that'll now uh, show us what we have to do. So I'm going to change champion to boxer, and I'm going to relink it here. Now what I've done is uh, maybe maybe a better way to show you guys that is I'm just going to delete this one, relink it here, so that now the now the martial archetype for the fighter is boxer instead of champion. Now we have to change everything that's in here. So let's do the boxer description, change that. And you see, since I didn't put uh, since I didn't put it in the text editor, this is a good opportunity to to show you guys what you can do it in Fantasy Grounds by highlighting everything and then just hitting Control J, and that will clean it up. Sometimes when you do that, you get extra spaces here like it might have ended up looking like that and then I would have had to come here and done that that's why I use the text editor uh, but however you're most comfortable doing it now here are the uh, features and so let's just open all these up here and we're gonna change them all basically and then maybe have to create one or two more and I'll show you how to do that so the first thing it has is a third level thing called pugilistic prowess so we're going to change that it is third level so we're going to leave that and then we're just going to take this description put it in the text editor clean it up bring it over here and replace this now one very important thing is that the the specialty required is no longer champion it is now boxer so you have to make sure you change that or when the character is made it won't it won't pick that up so basically we've done this and I'm just going to hit control one on all these links to make them unlinked. And then so that I don't lose my place, I'm just going to do these one at a time. So I'm going to replace this one here, pugilist, pugilist prowess, and then we're done with that. Now the next one I have is seventh level, and here I've got another third level thing. So we're going to make another space here. Uh, what I did was I hit return and it made an empty link, so I did control one. That's how I got rid of that. Uh, now. Um, since there's an extra one here, we need to go to the back page of the class and look for the features, and we need to make another feature. So we're just going to make a blank one, and we're going to open it up, and we're going to fill it in. So this is called Bob and Weave. It is a third level, and the description is here. And so we'll clean up the text and put it in. Again, making sure that we put boxer down here in the specialty. And then we've made our second feature, and we can link it there, and we haven't lost our place. Uh, there's a blank space there, but I can get rid of that. All right, so the next one is level 7. And again, we have another third level 1. So I need to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to put a blank space here. I'm going to make. I'm going to create another feature here. I'm going to open it, and I'm going to fill it in as left-right hook, which is third level, and put in the description. And again, what do we need to do? Now, see, I, I did not clean that up, but there, now it's cleaned up. I, I should have put it in the text editor. Uh, and now I'm going to put boxer here, and then left-right hook gets put there. So the next one is set. So this one should be seventh. Yeah, so it is. So crushing blows. We're just going to replace the information in remarkable athlete. It is seventh level. We're going to clean out this text. Uh, we're going to take this text, put it in. Let's see if it works. If I do the Control J thing, um, it looks good. And then of course we're going to change this to boxer. And we are replacing remarkable athlete. So let's get rid of that right over here put that there next one should be 10th level and it is so knockout shot 10th level get rid of all this put this in here paste it highlight it control J it up I usually don't do it that way because uh, this happens to be working out very nicely with no double spaces um, whoops, okay, I messed that up, boxer, okay, 
and we are replacing additioning additional fighting style with Bach with the uh, oh I closed it okay so now we got to go find it I'm kind of glad that happened because I messed up so boxer is not boxer what was that called that was called knockout shot uh, here it is right here so there's the one we just made knockout shot I'm gonna put it right there boom superior critical is 15th level the next one on the list is 15th level called haymaker so we are gonna replace it 15th level we're gonna open this copy all this in here highlight it control J uh, we're gonna replace superior critical and then we should have one more which on the champion is survivor and this is 18th level called undisputed champion and we will put in the stuff up and we have now built the subclass except for that I somehow screwed up big time don't know what happened there but let's just everybody calm down uh, I think when I copied it, I just got lost. So, Undisputed Champion at 18th level, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Boxer. All right, so now, take out what I had here. Do it the right way. Okay, so now, if I go uh, over here to the SRD and I just close that... Now I have my fighter class here, and if we go back over to the main page, it's all the same information that's in the fighter SRD with the, the chart and everything. And it's got all the features of the fighter, and then it's got the martial archetype boxer, and if you open up the boxer, there's all the stuff we built, and each thing is there. And then on the back uh, on the back page of the fighter is still just all the same stuff that would have been there before. Now, if you're building a brand new class, this stuff's pretty self-explanatory. You just put in the the uh, the hit dice, the armor, the saving throws, skills, tools, weapons, uh, whatever the proficiencies are, and then the the only difference in the in the features uh, you have, like say for example, fighting style and bob and weave. Let's take a look at those together side by side. If I can that side by side okay so the difference is in a in a feature that's for the class only there's no information filled out let me open it up there's no information filled out in the bottom of these two uh, things right here whereas a subclass option would then have the specialty required filled out there so that it matches up because you might have many subclasses and if you had like 12 subclasses this list right here would just be huge it would just be pages and pages and uh this dot right here the special choice that is when at the level so if i open up this martial archetype right here that's the one that's going to have the dot in it because that's when you're telling fantasy grounds as you're building a character hey i'm at the level now where i have to choose a specialty and then when this when you tick this right here it knows to ask you to pick an archetype for the class so uh, hopefully that that is understandable this might be a video you have to watch back a couple of times but we have now built ourselves a subclass of the boxer in, under the fighter class and it is done all right so let's go on to the next step what was the next step um, we built a background, we built a class, now we're going to build a feat. And the feats are super easy, of course. So open up a feat, uh, build a new one. We're going to go down and find the feat in the document, which is here. Uh, it's called requisite. Not requisite. <laughs> I read the word prerequisite. It's called wrestler. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy all this stuff, put it in here and clean it up, and then bring it over. So prerequisite is bolded, so I'm going to highlight that and bold it. Again, Control-B, strength 15 or higher. 
uh, you've done the blah 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 benefits. Now, uh, control four is how you make bullet points. So I'm going to make one bullet point there, and I'm going to go down and find the next sen sentence, and I'm just going to hit enter, and it's going to make a bullet point for me automatically. I'm going to go down to the next sentence, and again, hit the bullet point, and it'll make it automatically. So there, that feat's built. It's done. So it's really quick to build feats, and if you had 20 or 30 of them, you could build them all right there. So that's it. You're done there. Uh, let's go to the next step, which I think is must be races. Uh, races, okay. So races are uh, not that hard. And again, you can open, if you, if you want, you can open another example race and look at it side by side. And may, maybe we'll do that. We'll go back to the SRD. We'll open up just a, an example race like the Dragonborn or something. And then we'll look at it side by side as we do ours. So let's go to races, Dragonborn. And we'll look at that. And then we'll build our brand new race here. All right. So our race is called Six Handed One. And here is the description. Again, I'm going to put in the text editor, just clean it up a bit, put it back here, just makes it easier. That. And then we're going to put six handed one traits. Uh, control two to make that just like the other one. Um, it seems that what they did, <laughs> what happened there? The, you know, I skipped another. I skipped the sentence again. Uh, and it looks like in the they just did it reverse here. So you 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 know if you if you like it better to have that out of there, put it up here. Do it that way. You can do it that way. Uh, but now we'll build the the ability see ability score increase. So there's a mistake in there. But is it a mistake? Uh, no, I think it's that thing with the PDF thing again. So I'm going to actually close that and reopen it. I think it's just that PDF is is not wanting to read read for me the right way. Recent files. Yeah, there. It's all back now. Okay. So this is a little easier than you would think it would be because on the second page, uh, here's here's the Dragonborn. Here's all the traits that you have. And if you do have a sub race, you add that in. Th that's not something I'm going to uh, talk about today. Like it's a little more complicated, but it, it's, uh, you know, once you learn how to do all this, adding things like that are, are pretty easy. So we're going to go here and we have how many traits? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight traits. So I'm going to make eight blank things here. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to open all of them up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to make sure that I have eight spaces here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that I can now just drag those over once I build them. Maybe that right there, like that. Okay, so we're just going to build them. Uh, ability score increase. Uh, plus two strength and plus one dexterity. Now, this example PDF might not have, like, that's that's obviously not the way you would word it. You'd want to word it properly, but uh, I'm just using an example that was given out of the thing that made the PDF for me. So it's just kind of a BS example. But we're more showing how to do it as opposed to getting it correct. Uh, so that'll work, because obviously things have to be uh, worded correctly. Uh, but this is just an exercise in showing how to build it. So we're going to go here and do this. And yeah, see, it gets crazy when you try to copy things from different lines out of PDF sometimes. There, I got lucky. And when you see that it's in there like that, I again, it's a short sentence, so I'm not using the text editor. But I am going to back that up and put a space so that it, it made it uh, better like that. And then I'm going to copy that over there like that. Uh, and you see, since I set myself up, I opened eight blank things. And so it's just really easy to just 
grab it, copy it over, paste it, uh, clo and uh, clean it up. And it looks like there's no period at the end, but again, you know, these are the things that you're looking for as you're going through. And the hands. And this is just a made-up race that that's not even real. I mean, it's just for the purposes of being able to show it on the video. Control A, Control J, highlight and clean up. Control J again, cleaning up. That's because I've chosen not to do putting it in the text editor. I usually, if it's really short, you know, two, three lines, I'll I'll just do it right directly in Fantasy Grounds. Oops. Now, see, I didn't I didn't link that over, so. It's not it's not a big deal because on the second page it'll be there. Uh, you know the ones I missed. As a matter of fact, I probably missed. Did I not do? <laughs> okay, I did three of them. So I just didn't do speed. One, one, two, three, four, five. There's five, and I only did three. Ability score, racial, and pack. Oh, I forgot multi hands too. All right, so I'm gonna correct my mistakes here. So speed was there. Now, if you've got one you need to squeeze in, the way what's going to happen is I'm going to go here and hit enter to give myself a new line, but it's going to give me a blank link. It's just going to give me an empty circle. So you just hit control one to turn that to text, and it, now it's just a blank line. And now I can correct my mistake by sliding multi hands in there like that. All right, so we did speed. We're going to do languages. And we'll put that in. Which is over there. And I don't know what, ha I thought I had a bunch of blank spaces there, but maybe I put more than I thought I did. Uh, let's see, size. And once you get your flow down, you can see that if you were making like 10 or 12 races or sub races, you know, you'd just be able to do all these together at the same time. And then they're already built for you when you're when you're done. Uh, and again, clean that up and age. Oh, I see. It's adding a line every time I put. OK, so I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that race is done. It's all built. And then on the on uh, this, that, that's all that appears here is all the traits that you have linked on the front page. And then if you were building a sub race, you would just do that there. And again, I'm not I'm not uh, going through that today, but it is pretty straightforward when you when you do that. And if you ever want examples, just open up, uh, you know, open up Elf and and look at Half Elf or what you know. I'm I, <laughs> you'd think I would know after playing D and D for so many years, but Whatever has a sub race, you could go just look at the example and, and copy that. All right, so that is uh, that's races. The next step is skills. Skills are really easy. You just uh, and it's very rare that you would be making skills. There's there's hardly ever a new skill, um, and these are the ones from the SRD. But if, if there is a new skill, you you can absolutely make it. And I wanted to be complete as I could, so we're going to make a new skill here. And again, I'm going to go close this SRD to just get that info out of our way. We might need to reopen it. I, I don't know. So here's a new skill. Uh, I'm calling the skill Comedian. And this skill, more nuanced than performance, your charisma comedian check determines how well you can craft or deliver a joke. Joke making can be important to lighten the mood in a social situation. That's one that I made up. And again, if I would, if, since that's so long, I probably should have put it in here and then cleaned it up. That way, when I pasted it in, it would have just been like nice like that. All right, comedian skill, two, two seconds, we're done. Uh, the next one is spells. Now, uh, earlier I showed I showed you guys um, masq.net, which is uh, mask.net, which is the N NPC or the uh, engineer suite that's been changed to. Used to just be called N NPC engineer. And spell engineer, but now he's changed it. And so there, there's a thing that does uh, spells here too. But again, since we're only doing one, it's almost more work to open that and use that. I just want to make make you aware that it does exist. 
but we're just going to be doing one spell, which is going to be really easy. So we're going to come here to spells. We're going to create a new one. And we're off to the races. So this spell is called Create Acne. Um, leave the summary blank. It is a fifth level enchantment spell. And it is not a ritual. The casting time is one action. The range is 30 feet. And you'll learn as you do these what's faster to copy and paste and what's faster to just type it. Like V comma space S is so much faster than than trying to copy and paste it one round. You do run the risk of misspellings, though. So here's the description. And we're going to say that's a... Down here in the source, you put uh, what classes. We'll say that's wizard and sorcerer. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Uh, and then you're done. You've made a spell. Boom. It's that easy. It's done. Create acne. Prerequisite. Must be a teenager. I don't know. All right, so let's go back up and just check that I did that. Uh, we we extracted the images. We made the we made the NPC tokens. We pre-generated the characters. We did the rollover. Oh, make build NPCs. I skipped that. So the NPCs, uh, I got to make one. And again, NPC engineer or engineer suite would be where you, the way you'd want to go here. But we're just making one. So it's going to be super easy to just do one. So I'm going to make it gum elemental. Uh, let's see. Size is gargantuan. Hello. I don't know how to spell that. Gargantuan. I better copy it. Uh, the type is guy as opposed to humanoid or, you know, beast. <laughs> it is a neutral annoying. <laughs> Again, this is just a made up thing. Armor class 10... Uh, hit points 64, and it is, um, 1d4 plus 5, which is totally not, you know, that's, that's only like 9 max hit points. So again, this is just, um, you know, made up speed. 29 feet is the, is the, uh, you know, and the stats are 9, 10, 7, 2, 11, 17, and condition immunity is buzzed, which of course is just funny, but it, it's not going to work. Fantasy Grounds does not recognize buzzed. Passive perception 9, again, we're just doing an example. Uh, languages, jive, <laughs> and challenge rating is 13, and the hit points for challenge rating 13 is 7410, which as we know is not true. Uh, and then just adding an action, and his action is Scorpion Flurry, which is a melee attack weapon that does this. Whoops, hello. That beep means I didn't quite copy it right. And that needs to be cleaned up, and that is super bad. Super bad, like the movie. Now, uh, you'll see that uh, plus four to hit highlights because that's done right. But of course, we have no damage type down here. So if I were to put piercing damage, then that would highlight and make it work. So there you go. Um, you know, these things do have to be formatted correctly. But building NPCs can be a whole class by itself. But we have built the NPC. So now I'm going to put back here on the back page. All I'm going to do is put the title, which I control two to make it a title like that. And then I'm going to put a picture of the gum elemental. Now, I go back to my uh, folder of our images, which, which we already created earlier. And here's the gum elemental. So I'm going, to, I'm going to change the name of that to gum elemental. And then I am going to open the maps and images, find gum elemental, which is the only one I've named. I don't like it that it's a small E, so I'm going to change that. And there we go. I'm going to drag this over here and say image gum elemental. And then what am I going to do is get the token, right? I'm going to go to tokens, campaign. There it is. I'm going to drag it and drop it. 
So now we have our gum elemental. Uh, the token is there. The image is there. Now, every time I'm done with an image, I like to lock it so that when I go through it at the end, I know that I'm finished. I said, oh, yeah, I've, I've dealt with that image. It's locked. And same with the NPC. It's pretty much done. The NPC is there. It's got the token. It's got the stats. It's got the image. It's done. Close that. Close this. And we just made ourselves a gum elemental, everybody. And that's how you do it. So let's go back up top. Um, Pre-gen, yeah. Tables, yeah. NPCs, magic items, backgrounds, classes, feats, races, skills, spells. Create blank story entries. Okay, so now, now we get into the meat of it. Now we've made everything that we need to complete the, the module, now we're going to actually start making it. So all of that, all of that whole 50 minutes was just to make the stuff we need to make the module. So this is many crazy long steps. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to open a blank entry. Now, uh, depending on your, you know, the way you like to do it, people have different numbering conventions. Unless it's a massive, like, two or three hundred page thing, I tend to stick with double digit dot double digit. For, so for example, uh, the first one would be uh, 00, .00 like that, and then a title. So the reason you number these is so that they stay in order in the story entries. So I'm going to just say uh, this is going to be pretty much down the line. So I'm going to say, okay, an example, Fantasy Grounds, Conversion. Okay, so all I did was make, make the title. Now I'm going to close that and open another story entry. And I'm going to go and I'm going to do this for everything. So I'm going to make this 00 00.10. Post that in there. And we're going to go through this whole thing and make all of these. Now this is a tedious task. It is a... Um, well, I mean, I guess there's not much more to say than it's tedious. However, I find it to be necessary... Because if you do it this way, then it's much easier as you go through to fill these out. And you'll see how, you'll see why that is. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to start with 01 here and make it images. And two tokens. So I'm just going to kind of like they're almost like they're chapter numbers in a way. Uh two tokens and I will I will take this time to mention that there is an extension on the on the fantasy grounds forums and this extension is called the author extension and it's pretty it's pretty sweet because with the author extension you can turn the story entries into a reference manual for your module now uh, for reasons I'm not going over that today that that could be like a whole special another video uh, but I have used this extension, and it is quite awesome. And if you get into module making and you want reference manuals in, um, you know, your, in, in your modules, then you can absolutely use it. And it's on the Fantasy Grounds forums called the Author Extension. So NPCs. Uh, magic items, or just items. Magic items and items are the same, basically. A seven. Whoops, oh, seven, oh, oh, like this. And again, this is kind of the boring part. But doing this in advance, m making all of these um, story entries blank in advance you will really see the power of why we do that uh you could do it each as you could i could make these one at a time and then fill out the information but you you can't even believe how fast it goes when you just do it this way so oh nine feats ten gonna be races Eleven skills. Twelve is spells.
Now, 13 through 18, I grouped together. So we will do that here as well. We'll call this 13, and we'll title it. Now, within this, um, do I want to have it be separated? No, I don't think so. So we'll go 19. module and then we'll do appendix A call that 20 appendix B 21 that's it now when we go through this, watch how fast this gets done. So since we built all those story entries, all we have to do, that's the entire thing right there. All we have to do is open up the first one, put what goes in there, and then just click the arrow to go to the next one. So this is all that goes in here. I'm going to clean it up in the text editor. And of course, because it's got that fancy T there, it gave us this extra space. So I'm going to post that there, and it looks like that's all one paragraph. So I'm going to lock that and pass it. Tools you will need. Uh, we might get lucky here. No. All right, so I have that as bullet points. So I'm going to go control four, control four, control four, control four, control four. Now there is there is another extension, uh, DOE uh, Deluxe Oz extensions that you can do to make links work, so that you can whoops, so that you can actually um, open up uh, links. So like if I had uh, a link for this it would actually you click on it and it would open your browser and take you to that website again uh, same as the author extension I'm mentioning this to you to, so that you know it's there but it's not part of what I'm teaching today so I'm basically just duplicating what I have here so that's done I'm gonna lock it and go to the next one so you see as I click the arrow it's already just waiting for me all I have to do is copy this in paste it and it's made all right the order of build uh, this might get crazy. Let's see if it works if I do this. Um, one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. I don't like, okay, let's move that like that. And again, just trying to clean this up and make it look nice. Uh, that looks good. So that's that. So we're going to go to images. Now, I have the, these couple paragraphs. So let me copy, paste that into the text editor, clean it up, jam it in here, make sure I've got the paragraph breaks done. And then I'm now going to put in two images, which I have to name. So I'm going to go here to the back to this uh, uh, back to this folder with the images, FG logo, I'm going to call that. And then I'm just going to put, as the Darth Vader one, I'm just going to call that the power, because <laughs> I think that's what the meme was when we created it. So once I've changed those names, they will show up here. FG logo, boom. The power, boom. And then I like to just, you know, kind of keep it consistent. Shh. This is kind of how you see it when you look at most uh, Fantasy Grounds modules. Uh, just kind of check them, make sure they work. Yep, that works. Lock that, and then lock this. Very good. Oh, that's kind of small. Nice. And then I'm done with that one. And we go to tokens. Uh, so tokens, we're going to copy this out. And the token doesn't really get placed here, but uh, we already made the token because we used it for the NPC, so that's kind of done. 
So we close that, and we're already flying through this. Now we're on page two. Pre-generated characters. This is just the verbiage about that, because of course we already made the pre-gen character. Uh, right here, it's done. And rollable tables. Any rollable tables that need to be built can easily be done with the table import extension. See example in seven backgrounds. Now, we already did that because we built the table uh, already. And uh, I will just bold that. And then that's done. NPCs. Again, we explain that NPC engineer or engineer suite can be used, or you can just build them directly. But we already built the NPC, so all I'm going to do is link it, and there it is. So if people are wanting to look, there it is. They open it up. There's the token. There's the picture. It's all right there. We already did the work. Whoops. Okay, so now I closed that. So where was I? That was NPCs, right? Good. Now let me just move to the next one. Magic items. Uh, all the magic items are built in Fantasy Grounds, so we're going to go right over here to items, grab that, put it in there. Already, there it is. And if we click on it, it's there. It's already done. Nice. Oops, I unidentified it. Whatever. Click on the arrow, go to the next one. Backgrounds. See, isn't it nice that we put that in there already? Uh, here's an example of backgrounds. Now I'm going to go to backgrounds because uh, we already built it. So all I would have to do is... Whoops, that's encounter. So we're going to get to that. Uh, where's backgrounds? Here we go. Backgrounds. And I'm locking each of these story entries knowing that when I lock it, I don't I don't really have to... When I go back through and look again, I won't have to worry about that because it's already done. Uh... This, this stuff was already in the background. Okay, so classes. Whoops, hello. Everybody just calm down. Nobody panic. <laughs> Let me try that again. Oh, my God. There we go. And then the class we made, which was called, it's a fighter. Whoops, new class. All right, we delete that. We don't need it. So the fighter's there, but, of course, we made the, we made the, the boxer boxer martial archetype is all there so we already did all that so it's there all right let's go to feats uh here's an example of the wrestler and we're going to go to feats now and that's done number 10 is races here's an example and we already built the race, so let's grab it. And I'm just making this PDF, like, right down the line. I'm just making whatever's in this PDF in the story entries. That's how I'm doing it. Skills for 11, a made-up skill named Comedian, which we already have. So grab that, put that in. Look how fast we're going through this. The work, the, the, the work, some people try to build it in order as they go through the PDF, and I, I found that to be, I mean, I, that's what I did. But, I mean, if you if you make all the stuff in advance, it's just so much easier. A fun spell, create acne, let's get the spell. I've already made it, so let's put it in there like that. Close this. Now, 13 to 18. So, th we are doing, we are doing this now. So, this will be a little bit more of a learning thing as we do this right here. Um, now I'm going to, okay, I'm, uh, I guess I probably should have made this table before, but the table, the table parser is an acquired taste. Uh, it is a, it is a fantastic thing to do if you can handle it. So. Um, let me first put in this text. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Uh, okay. So, I'm just going to make it look like it does in the PDF, and then I'll show you 
the different things that you need to do. And in case, um, in case we didn't get to it, uh, it's giving you examples here of, uh, obviously regular text is just regular. You don't need to do anything. If you, if you go to do something, like say you accidentally make that look like that and you want to go back to regular text, control one is always your default. Uh, some text may be title text, which is control two. So that's what that looks like. Some text may be chat frames, which is control three, so that's what that looks like. Some may be bullet points, which is control four. Some may be links, uh, not shown in the PDF, but if you do control five, it puts a link there. And again, that's that's any I can drag any link in, you know, I can drag a link and drop it there, but I won't do that because it's just a it's just an example. And then some may be inline table, which is control six. So uh, if you do control six, it makes that border around it. And then you can do, uh, you know, you can do, you can make tables. Well, I, I, that's kind of confusing. So I'm actually going to make a table now. Now there's two ways to make a table. You can copy and paste all this in and then do the control this and the control that. But there is the CSV table parser, which is an extension that I, installed which gives you this little thing up here on the top uh, top right it gives you this little marker thing like that and if you click on that it opens this and this is super hard to read this was made uh, not with the best I mean you can't even, you probably can't even see that on stream but basically what it's telling you to do is it's telling you to type in hashtag table hashtag in your story entry and then you're supposed to put all of this stuff in comma delimited. So I'm, I'm going to go through this because I think it's important because if you have a lot of tables that you're doing, this will save you an immense amount of time. So I am, gonna, I am going to show you how to do this. So I'm just going to open up a blank spreadsheet. This can be a, a, a text pad, you know, wh whatever you want. Now, I don't think if I paste that in, it's going to work. So yeah, yeah, that's not okay. That's not what we want. So here, here's here's what I've done in the past. I've, I just get a blank sheet here, and it's easier to do in a spreadsheet than you, than it would be into a text file. And I'll show you why. So what we want is we want columns that are separated by commas. So I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna hold the Alt key, and I'm only gonna grab this column. I'm not gonna grab anything outside that because. Uh, what I want to what I want to create is this kind of a thing, and then this is all going to be commas. So I'm going to fill this in with commas, and this is not supposed to be an Excel class, but I mean, whatever way you're more comfortable figuring out how to do this. But so co column one commas, and then let's go column two, which is the bonus proficiencies, and again holding Alt and then just highlighting C. It might give me a problem because it's wanting to copy all of that. So let's try just be finicky here. Looks like the second column down. So uh, whatever you have to do to work this out, it will save you time over the long run if you do it this way. So Oh, interesting. Um, I don't want those to be in as formulas. I want them to be in as as with the plus two. Let, let's try that again. Paste special paste format only. No, paste special. Values only. No. What the hell? Well, I didn't anticipate this, you guys. I, I apologize for having run into the snag, but it's obviously not wanting to give me plus two because it's putting it in as a formula. Now I can go through and 
Nope, it's still not going to let me do that. You have to you have to go like this plus 2. Yeah, so I might just have to I mean, th th this is mod welcome to module creation everybody. Uh, so let's see, tick plus three. I, I, I even did that wrong. Tick plus three. And I'm just going to fix these. Tick plus four. You could do it the manual way, but trust me, if you're doing a lot of tables, this is how you want to do it. Uh, because what, watch watch what happens when I get done with this. Oh, man, I did it wrong. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, yeah. And then tick plus six. Okay, whoops. Oh, 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 everybody calm down. Okay, there we go. Sometimes you make a mistake. Uh, all right, now let's go back and... That would be proficiency bonus. And I don't like how that came out, so I'm going to do... I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. Ah! Sometimes you got to work with what you got. Proficiency bonus. Okay. Now, of course, the next column is just going to be the same as commas. Because everything's separated by commas for the table. Um, now we're going to do features. So I'm going to go here. Hopefully we're going to get lucky. Oh, man. Let's just get lucky. Come on. Okay, I'll take it. So features. And I want to say I got to not do that because there's extra lines. So let's find out what happened here. Uh, it looks like that is okay. Or what happened? Let's try that again. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened there. That should be even, and and it's not. Oh. Oh, I, oh, because there's commas. Okay, so... Yeah, so, okay. So you see how there's commas in here? That can cause a problem because we don't want commas. So what I'm going to do is make those periods... Uh, let me go back. Let me say Control-Z. I'm going to make all the commas... Oh, interesting. It It is not... Well, okay, so again, another snag that usually doesn't come up, but apparently the Notepad++ is, is taking liberties with that and making commas for me. So let's go find out where that is. So it's actually features, one, two, and then there's a blank space. And then ability score improvement. And I'm going to put a period and make that. And what I'll do is, because commas are needed to separate this, you're going to want to put periods and then make it commas, change the commas after the fact. So eighth level is ability score improvement and this. Um, ninth level is actually blank. So we'll go down one. Uh, everything's good, everything's good. So 15th level, ability score improvement, comma, which of course, again, period we're using. And you'll see why we're using, if we use a comma, it's going to separate it because that, that extension uses commas to separate things. So we need to use a period and then change it after. Uh, statistical. Ooh. Uh, hey, Fracking Toaster, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, ability score improvement. Okay, wait a minute. Where was I? Got, I got lost. Okay. D -d 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 okay, 15th level is ability score improvement oh no 14th level okay so 16th level is the same thing then 19th level same thing now 
theoretically, when I copy it this time, it should be it should be right. Okay, looks good. And again, commas in the next column over. And then you're going to go to the last column, which again is going to be this friggin' plus thing that I'm going to have to mess with. Because it doesn't like, just doesn't like it. Likes to try to make math into everything. So tick plus one. Tick plus two. Tick plus three. Not, didn't do it right. Tick plus three. Oh, wait, no, only one. Okay, tick plus four. Those tick plus five. I probably should have. I didn't look at that ahead of time. I I, I would have known not to do this, but hey, you gotta learn how to do it. You gotta. If there's a mistake, or if there's a problem, you gotta figure it out. There's two of those sevens. Plus seven. And plus eight. Plus nine. All right, and then that—that's called. Uh, what was that called again? That was called Hermetic Geography. Whatever, man. Don't use those big words with me. All right. So now, now we have we've we've got this. You know, column, commas, column, commas, column, commas, column. So now if I take all this and put it in the clipboard, and then should this work out the way I want it to, look at that shit. The, the table's just built. The whole thing's there. And then all I have to do is, like we said, go in and replace the commas with, or the periods with commas. And remember, if we would have used commas, it would have just made an extra column and it would have screwed up the whole table. And I only know that from experience. So if we go in here and look for all the periods and replace the commas. Now imagine building that table just step by step. You could do it and it might not have taken quite as long, but if you're doing a lot of tables, that's just the quickest way to do it. So there's the table, everybody. And then of course you're gonna highlight this, control B, and there you go. So now we have our table that is here, is here. And I'm going to go down here. I'm going to hit an extra column. It's going to it's going to try to make another entry to the table right there. But I'm just going to hit, uh, hello. I'm just going to hit Control-1 and go back to text. And then I can paste whatever's down here. Again, I think we have an issue with the PDF. Doesn't seem that that's right. Let's just close that and reopen it. That I have never had to do that more than once um, while looking at a PDF. So something's obviously odd with this particular PDF. Uh, but we'll go back and there we go. Okay, and then we're going to put that stuff there and clean it up to where it's supposed to be. These are all bullet points. Control 4, Control 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. Four, and then this is bolded. Whoops, hello. B, and then like that. And I believe, yep, that's that's it for that. So we've got everything there. We're going to go to exporting the module and just put that information in. And I am going to put that in the text cleaner. Uh. Hold that, and then so this is uh, 
this is where I'm going to put, I can't do it now because we're, we're not done, but this is where I'm going to put xxx.com. Unfortunately, that's not supposed to be porno or anything. That's just my algebra, algebraic mind. You know, x equals put that website in there, you know, later, whatever it is. But we can't do it until the video is uploaded. So we're kind of doing a, what's it called? A, 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 a paradigm. We're, we're, we're trying to put the video in that hasn't been made yet. So we're just going to make this look like it does uh, here, and then th that will leave that. Um, if this has helped you, please consider a donation. And then, of course, I'm going to put in the uh, click here is maybe a PDF only thing. So I'm going to get that out, and then I'm going to just put in the two graphics, which are. Uh, Rob Tui and PayPal and let's go put that in maps Rob Tui now it uh, you see that it didn't put the name there that's usually that's a formatting thing that so something has gone wrong and so you just try it again uh, let's see if it works this time there we go and then I'm going to put image, PayPal, and I'm going to spell image correctly this time. And this is just my attempt to, you know, people appreciate what I'm doing. They can throw me a coffee. I use that as an example. I'm not a coffee drinker, but that's what everybody says. Buy me a coffee. <laughs> and then, then, then you put that. So let's make sure that that opens up. Yep. Link. That, close that. This one. Yep. Close that. All right. So now that looks like this page. Oh, there's another image. Uh, it's the uh, the coffee mug or whatever. Let's go. I'm gonna call that mug. Call it mug o ale. Mug. I don't know what it is. Beer stein maybe. But nevertheless, I'm gonna put that there. Open it up. See, it did not put that there, but I can fix that just by doing this. All right, Muggo Ale. So I believe we've made that. Now, Appendix A map. So I'm going to name this map. Um, I'm going to name this map Caverns. This actually is one of the maps from Unknown Whom 2 that I just did last week, uh, drawn by Dead Hand, the awesome Dead Hand. So let's go back there and call this Caverns. And then all we have to do is link it and maybe say map like that. And then go to the next one. Now, the last, uh, I, I initially didn't have this, but then I got all done thinking about making this, how to make a module beginning to end. And there was no, <laughs> there was no encounters or quests or parcels. So I did this. So Appendix B is all of this. And we'll just put that in there and clean it up so that we have it so it looks nice. Okay, so now uh, that's the end of the PDF. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to go through the process of what you need to do. So. Normally, you would have a PDF that would have many, uh, you know, many stories, many chapters, many, you know, you go here, you go to the house, you look under the house, you go to the basement, you kill the cobalts, on and on and on with encounters and parcels and so forth. And so it would just be riddled with many, many, many of these. But we're going to pretend that this is an all in, in one example here because we've, if you go, if, let's go through the buttons. So PC. Made, we made a PC. Notes, you don't use because that's just an in-campaign thing. Those don't get exported. Maps, we have. Maps and images, that is. Tables, we did. Stories, we're doing now. Uh, quests is something that we're going to do. NPCs, we did. Encounters is something that we're going to do. Uh, items, we did. Parcels is now something we're going to do. Backgrounds, we did. Classes, we did. Feats, we did. Races, we did. Skills, we did. Spells, we did. Tokens, we did. 
Okay. So we have quest, parcel, and encounter. Now, quests usually don't come up that much, but I wanted to show it in case they did. So let's just say uh, that there was, you know, quest one. And let's say that it was a CR1, you know, 100 points or what, 100 XP, and that the quest was find the gum elemental, defeat it, and take the wonder's hat. So let's just say that's what the quest was. So now you could link the quest in there like that, and and you're done basically. And now when you're when you're playing the game, you've got a quest, and you can open the party sheet and divvy it out and whatever. That you know that's not part of what we're talking about today. Uh, a parcel. Now, usually what I do is I type actually parcel and then encounter. That's just how I do it. If you look at all my modules, the ones I've converted, that's mainly 95% of the time. I think that's what you're going to see. So a parcel now, we're going to make a new parcel. The way I title parcels is I just title the parcel for whatever the story entry is. So I simply copy that and paste it and put it in there. And then this part parcel is the wondrous hat. So let me go to the items, get the wondrous hat, put it in there. And it also says 50 gold pieces, so I'm going to put 50 gold pieces there and close it up and bring it over and drop it in. There's the parcel. And now all we have is the encounter. So the encounter, again, I, I make the parcel and the encounter at the same time for the same story entry. So I already have that in the clipboard. All I have to do is hit Control-V, and there's the title again. And then this encounter is one gum elemental, so let me go to the NPCs. Put in the gum elemental, hit this to calculate the CRV. The CRV, what are you going to? I don't know why I said CRV instead of just CR. Okay, and then that's the parcel. We're going to go there and put it on encounter, and that's it. And guess what? Except for pinning the maps, we are basically done. So now what I do is I go through even another time and... Let's just make sure that we didn't miss anything. So uh, we got that. That's the tools you need. First things first. We created the campaign. Uh, order of the build. We, we went through that. And this is this is where we are now. We are going to... We're on step 17. Uh, so we, we did all this, and then we locked the story entries that we... And they, they should all be locked now, because I think we're done. And then we have to pin the maps. So let's let's stop and do that. Let's go to the map. And we're only going to just show one example of this because normally you would have many maps with many pins. But in this case, uh, when we open up the caverns map, and we need to lock that. And let's just shrink it down so that we can look at it here. So the encounter is basically story entry 21 is where the encounter is. So I'm going to put that right here on the map just by dragging the story entry, and there's the pin. So if we didn't have that, if you're on the map and you click that pin, it opens that. It opens the story entry. Now I'm going to open the encounter, and I'm going to drag the token from the encounter onto the map. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, forget about that. I made a mistake. I made a mistake, because first thing we have to do is grid the map. And of course, you just right-click, choose Layers, choose Set Grid, and then draw the grid on. This should match up nicely at 50, I think. Very good. Okay, now when we put on there, again, you're going to drag the token, or tokens, as it were, on there. And that is a gigantic monster, so it should be like nine squares or whatever. Maybe we'll put them down here, like that. So it is a it is a big monster, and now uh, when you close this encounter, this token will disappear off the map uh, because that's the placement of it. And and what you're doing by dragging that token on there is that when the DM goes to set this encounter up, looking at the at the, at the combat tracker, when he clicks the button here, he or she clicks add encounter to combat tracker. It's going to put that token there. And it's going to put this monster in the combat tracker. And so you've basically set that up for the DM. It's already ready to go. So there you go. Uh, so we've pinned the map. Uh, we placed the encounter tokens on the map. We did that. And now we're going to export the module because this, this baby's done. 
This is like all finished, everybody. Did that in an hour and a half. That's about what I thought. So, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube later, or if you guys that are watching live on Twitch now have questions, uh, I'll turn the chat back on when I stop the video. But uh, if you have questions, please PM me in Discord, and I'll answer them there for for you too. I tried to. If uh, the reason I didn't take questions during is then it then it would have taken three hours because I would have had to. You know, I'm I'm more doing this as as though I were just doing it as a class. And so uh, how you export the module and make the actual MOD file is you come right over here and you type in slash export. And now we're going to title it. The, the title on the top is the name of the .mod file. So fantasy grounds, example, um, conversion. And then I always highlight that and copy it. And then I add .mod because the name is, I is, when I do it, is always the same. So I do that. Now, the thumbnail, you can go to pick any picture out. And if we go back into the campaign, it wants to have a PNG. You can use a, uh, a, JP, a JPEG if you want. It wants a PNG. I'm going to go ahead and use just the Fantasy Grounds logo. Why not? Let's do that. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be consistent and use what I always use, which is my stupid Fakakta thing that I branded myself with that I can't get out of, this Rob Tui logo. That's what I'm going to use. Okay. The category is going to be... Um, it's not an adventure. It's not core rules. I guess it's a supplement. Or maybe I can make a new category and call it... Um, Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call it what everything else is called that I do, which is uh, 5e Rob 2e Rob 2e mod. But you can call it anything you want, and the author is, of course, me, Rob 2e. Now, uh, is this a read-only? No. Is this a player module? Not really, no. It's a DM module. So now my, my common practice is I go down and I export everything. Even if there isn't something in here. Uh, now, we didn't cover item templates or uh, random encounters or anything like that because this, again, is supposed to be a basic like how-to. I didn't really want to get into the nuances. But if I go ahead and export that, so I filled out all that information, I clicked all the things, I'm now going to export it, and it's going to tell me module exported successfully. Now, normally you could just o open the module in your library, but since, since that's a brand new module that Fantasy Grounds didn't have in the file folder until now, I am, I'm going to close Fantasy Grounds and reopen it. And then we'll see that module. And so normally when I'm testing something, I go to load a campaign and I go to my blank 5e, you know, test with no extensions uh, just to open it up and check it. And so once we get this open, we should be able to check that module. And I have already made a post on the Fantasy Grounds forums. So if you're watching this video, you can download the PDF from there. Uh, there have been a couple changes today before I did the show to that PDF, so I'm going to update that. But that way you'll have the PDF as your instructions. You'll have the video, and then you will also be able to download this example module. And you'll have all three parts to refer to as kind of a, a quick course on how to... Uh, do this. And as of October 8, 2018, the information that I've given you is is correct, uh, you know, or, or as complete as I think it can be for, uh, you know, what I'm teaching. And the other thing to say about that is that the only thing you can't do in Fantasy Grounds that we just did 
you know, you hear people talking about building it in Parse or, you know, doing some of these other, going into XML directly and using Lua and doing all these different things. The only, the only two things that you cannot do in Fantasy Grounds directly that we just did is with NPCs, you can't export it so that it makes this uh, NPC by alphabetical, by challenge rating, and by class index. You can't do that within Fantasy Grounds. However, NPC Engineer or the Engineer Suite can do that. So if you build your NPCs with that, it will be able to do that. Uh, the other thing you can't do directly in Fantasy Grounds is a reference manual, although I did tell you that you can use uh, the author extension, which is available on Fantasy Grounds forums. And then the last thing you can't do is items. You, you can't make the categories, uh, you know, like the player's handbook and that. You, you can't, you, you uh, I guess I should open up something. Maybe I'll open the player's handbook because that, that's a better example here. So let me try and get, get that real quick. Player's handbook. So why isn't the armor showing up? Armor. I don't know. Weapons. What? Why isn't that? That's super weird. I don't know why that's not showing up. That's super weird to me. But you guys know what I mean. This, this thing that makes the name, the cost, the damage, and the way you can't do that uh, within Fantasy Grounds and then export it. That's that's the only the only things that you can't do. But everything else we did. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's go find it. What did I call it? It was, uh, yeah, this Fantasy Grounds example conversion. So if we open that up. We see, I must have mistitled that somehow. Unfortunately, in Fantasy Grounds, you can stretch this out all you want. You can't see the rest of that title there. Anyway, we've got the backgrounds. We've got the encounters. We've got the pre-gens. There they are. There's the, there's the thing. And if I, if I click on that, it then sends it to here. And there was already one in there, but there it is. So your pre-gens work. Classes are there. Feats. Images and maps. Items, NPCs, quests, races, skills, spells, story, tablets, tablets, tables, and parcels. So there it is, everybody. We did everything. And I was able to do that in about an hour and 40 minutes from beginning to end. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hopefully that helps people. Hopefully we get a lot more people making a lot more modules to play a lot more games and get a lot more DMs. Uh, you know, going with Fantasy Grounds. And I mean, this to me, this is pretty exciting stuff. And this is pretty much what I do like all day, every day. If you don't see me streaming, this is what I'm doing, is making these things. As you can tell by going to the DMs Guild and searching my name and seeing like 90 titles there. By the way, let me just mention, how come this is frozen now? I don't like it. That's very upsetting to me. Uh, this, this video is made on October... Uh, 8th 2018 and tomorrow at 9 a.m tuesday at 9 a.m pacific time you will be able to see the haunt 2 when i publish it because hello it's going to be awesome uh so that's that's going to be published in a mere i don't know 13 and a half hours from now uh so i apologize for the outdated information if you're watching this <laughs> you know a year from now or something but uh i do appreciate everybody's interest and uh you can uh if you're in the if you're in the chat now and Twitch, uh, which I'm going to open back up as I end the video, then you know, you're welcome to ask questions and I'll hang out. Otherwise, I am going to end the stream and I am going to end the video, and um, I just hope that everybody uh, learned something, had a good time, and I hope that you're able to watch this back again and again and again. And uh, if you want to learn how to make modules, there's there's the basic building blocks. Again, there may be things that I didn't get to or that I left out that are that are small nuances or or, you know, drilling down into specific things uh, like random encounters or, or table templates or, you know, stuff like that, story templates, and we didn't get into that. But um, I really hope this helped everyone. And uh, until next time, good gaming, everyone.